Your boy Charlie Rock LD, life coach, prison mentality. Let's change that mindset, yo. Making the transition from convict to civilian, survivorless and hostile environment. Adolescent when I got my sentence. Raised in the Department of Correction with the violence intention, I'm bringing in my henchmen. Repping the real is what I'm repping. I be that OG BX legend, Charlie Rock LD. Repping the real is what I'm repping. My people, what it do, what it do, repping the real, the hottest podcast out right now. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and rocking with your boy. You already know we in the yard. I see we got the first victims. I got the crazy, crazy show for y'all today. I noticed that I enjoy going on Saturdays. Everybody's relaxed. This is a good time. You know what I mean? I see we got the first victims on. Again, thanks everybody for tuning in. We got the epic, epic stories. Your boy C-Rock is going in. Today's topic, NYC OG legends. That's right. I know y'all like them OG stories. I've been getting the mad comments, the mad suggestions. Y'all want me to bang out with the OG stories? That's what you want. So that's what your boy is giving you. You know what I mean? NYC OG legends. Before I even get into it, I want to state these is official stories. These are not stories that I heard on YouTube. Repping the real. You already know. The show is repping the real. These are not stories that I heard on YouTube, that I heard from my man when I was locked up. These are not stories that I heard on the block. No, I know these dudes. These dudes I'm about to talk about, I know these dudes. I ran with these dudes. I put in work with these dudes. So these legends, like your boy C-Rock, is dudes that I know, that I ran with, that I grew up with, that we came up the ropes together. We was locked up together. We was on the island. Your boy Chicky and me was on the island. We was up top. Baby Cañonero, for those that don't know, Baby is my actual blood cousin. That's right. We're going to be going in on the homie boy George, the crazy old OG legends from NYC. I see we got the crazy people over here. All right. Let's show some love. Who's this? Pito checking in from BK. Ya tu sabe. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the love. The little Butelo. You know your boy C-Rock can't get started without the Butelo. How y'all feeling the intro? I'm killing them with the intro. I love, love, love the intro. We stepping it up, homie. Your boy is stepping it up. We doing big things. Fuck what you heard. We in the yard. I want everybody to relax. You already know how I do. All positivity. Leave that negative shit at the fucking door. I want everybody to relax. Get comfortable. Jump in your bed, your sofa, in your cell, wherever the hell you at. You know what I mean? If you a smoker, light them L's up. If you a drinker, take a shot and get ready to be entertained. Your boy C-Rock LD is here to entertain your ass. Repping the real, the hottest podcast out right now. We international. We got the mad people checking in already. Let's show some love over here. Who's this? All right, checking in East New York. The homie right here, Cutthroat, always in the yard. 
Cutthroat, stay in the yard. Salute, my brother. The other homie over here, Lou. Lou, stay in the yard. It is what it is. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, man. So, yeah, let's get started. Again, we're going to be talking about Boy George, who's the official legend slash kingpin. You know what I mean? If you're from the X anywhere in New York City, and you ain't here, any, again, we're talking about the 80s, my man. We're not talking about the 2000s. You know your boy C-Rock? That's my age bracket right there. So we're going to be talking about Boy George, who's the official legend slash kingpin. Chicky from the Boulevard, <clears throat> also known as Chicky Boo, also known as Chicky the Emperor. Chicky holds many titles. That's that dude. And, of course, Baby Cañonero. But those that don't know, Baby started the Cañoneros up top, and it is what it is. <clears throat> like I told you, I personally know these dudes. These are true stories. These are personal stories. You know what I mean? And it is what it is, man. Rock with your boy. We in the yard. The first one we're going to talk about is Boy George. Who's here right here? We got love from Utica. Shout out where you at. Shout out where you at. I'm reading the comments. Give me a second. Y'all know I like to show love. That's why y'all fuck with me. Ah, the homie right here. This LA. All right. You already know. Yes, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into Boy George and the cars and everything. So let's talk about Boy George. <clears throat> Boy George had the stamp called Obsession. For those that don't know, the, the stamp on his diesel was Obsession. Boy George was one of the first, I'm not saying the only one or the first, but he was one of the first millionaires in the Bronx in the 80s as far as with the diesel. The nigga had spots all over. George was killing him with the obsession, was killing him, killing him with the obsession. And uh, I actually met boy George in Morris High School. That's right. George and me met in high school. I got flicks of him. I'm going to put the flicks up later. So, yeah, George and me met in high school. Of course, this was before he became who he was supposed to become. Uh, the story on George is that he used to be one of the head runners for organization that was pumping out uh, Checkmate. That's right, Checkmate. Boy George was banging with a crew called Checkmate who was dumb dudes. And to my understanding, he was one of their top runners, so he knew where all the spots were. He knew where, you know, how much money was coming in and all that. He used to pick up the money. So obviously he had the knowledge of where all the spots was. So according to the story... <clears throat> The feds came and snatched up the whole checkmate crew, the whole organization. For some reason, George had just stepped into the organization and he slipped through the net. So for some reason, he didn't get snatched up. But he knew where all the spots was and everything and all that. So according to the story, boy George found out who the connect was that was hitting off the dudes from checkmate. He stepped to them. And told him the truth. Listen, I know where all the spots is at. I could do that. Continue to hit me off. So according to the story, allegedly, that's what happened. They started hitting him off. He knew where all the spots was at. So it was real easy for him to get up in there and do what he do. We got Flay from Newark, New Jersey. My people subscribe. I need y'all to subscribe. Rock with your boy. So, yeah, George was a lethal, lethal dude, man. George, by what well, he was, what, 1920, multimillionaire status. How are you a millionaire at 18 in the Bronx? Again, at that time, my people, you know, dudes was giving it up. You know what I mean? For you to have a dope spot that was pushing $60,000, $70,000 a day was not rare. There was mad people that was doing it like that. And George had multiple spots, multiple, multiple spots. One thing about boy George, he always guaranteed that his work was a smoker. Always guaranteed that his work was a smoker. So that was his reputation. So the fiends already knew wherever they seen a spot that was banging obsession, it was a smoker. You know what I mean? Uh, 
you know, it is what it is. The fiends knew that obsession was always, they had the crazy big bags. The count was crazy. The work was crazy. It was going to have you not in the puck out. And that's what the fiends liked. So he built his reputation on that. You already know. Who's this right here? Let's show to them love to my homie right here. Another thing about George, back then the connects, which he was a connect, they was giving up 30, 40%. So when I say a guy was making 60, 70,000 dollars a day, even though it was your spot, you didn't keep the whole 60, 70,000. No. Back then, dudes was giving out 30%, 40%, 20%. So not bad. Out of 60,000, you're making 20%. You know what I mean? And the rest goes to the connect. You know what I mean? To the plug. But you guys go to the plug. Ah, rock with your boy. So another thing with George was he was only giving out 10%. Back then, the average connect was giving out 30 to 35 percent. The homie George was only giving out 10 percent. So that means you had to make 10,000 to make a thousand dollars. That was crazy. But he guaranteed you that it was always a smoker, and he would guarantee you that, um, that in less than a week, you'll be pushing 25, 30,000 a day. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I never fucked with him on that because you're not giving me 10%. Fuck that. I got to make 10000 for you to make 9000 and I'll make 1000 Nah, your boy wasn't rocking with that. But anyway, George, let's talk about his cars. George had the crazy cars. He was one of the first dudes that I know of to have what they call the James Bond car. Again, with that type of money, you could basically do whatever the hell you want. My people, subscribe, subscribe. We need that boy George movie, you already know. Another thing about George, you don't see too many interviews on him because I heard he don't like to give up interviews. For whatever reason, mad people have stepped to him, offered him all types of money to do his life story. And he refuses for whatever reason, he don't do no life stories. Mad people done step to him, offer them the rights to do movies, to do shows, to do DVDs. And to my understanding, he keeps shooting them down for whatever his reason is. He could have been home. For whatever reason, he just refused to do, you know, to let people do their fucking movies and all that shit and everything. You know what I mean? It is what it is. <clears throat> Again, I believe he got locked up in 88 or 90. I'm not sure. 88 or 90 was when your boy George got locked up. The Fed snatched him. He had a long run. I believe he had like a five, six year run. <laughs> Again, I know these dudes personally. I'm not talking about... I, I seen the interview on YouTube or my man told me, no, I was rocking with these dudes. Rocking with them on a minimum level. You know what I mean? I knew them. They knew me. You know, I was doing me. They was doing them, you know, but you know, I definitely knew these dudes. You know, we came up the ranks together. <laughs> to my understanding, yeah, 88 or 90 was when he got locked up. The story goes that he had rented out uh, a big ship. For uh, Christmas of 88. And all his top-notch workers was there. Everybody was there. You know? And all the workers was the feds. The feds was actually the waiters and the butlers and the servers and the chefs. So naturally, they took pictures of everybody. You know, they was, you know, copying everything that came in. I heard he used to give out uh, diamond-encrusted belt buckles that set obsession to all his top lieutenants. George was crazy. George was on another level, man. Boy, George was on another, another level. My people, he was so much on another level that he still locked up from the 80s. Imagine how much work he was putting in. Again, he was lethal. When you have that type of money, you lethal. You know, as far as him putting in his own work, of course, I don't think he was putting in his own work. But again, when you got millions and millions of dollars, you don't need to put your own work in. You got all the killers on the payroll. You know, uh, he used to come through to the hood. 
line up all the little kids in the basketball court and give everybody a basketball and give them 10 shots from the free throw line. And for every shot you got in, he'll give you a thousand dollars. That's how your boy was giving it up. George was crazy. George used to give the little kids 10 shots at the basketball court from the free throw line. And, uh, for every shot you got in, he gave you a thousand dollars. So you were 10, 12 year old kid. If you got five shots in, you know what I mean? That's five racks. You balling. Back then, you definitely balling. What the homie say here? You saying I'm from the 90s with the cut? What you talking about? You ain't feeling the cut? What's wrong with the cut, man? Why you ain't feeling the cut? This is the 90s haircut? Am I supposed to have different colors like that motherfucking rat 6'9 and all that and everything? No, homie. You know, your boy's OG status. You already know what you call, guys call an old head. Your boy's a dinosaur. This is the cut I'm rocking, nigga. Fuck that. Who's this nigga? The likes, my people. Hit the likes. We got your man, Monk. Monk Money. You already know. Salute to the homie. Stay in the yard. Stay repping Charlie Rock LD. I'm trying to see how many people we got in here. Where can I tell how many people we got in here? Oh, okay. I see it. I see it. You know, I only got one headlight. I can't see the shit. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you enjoying the stories. It is what it is. Epic stories. Smash that like button, my people. Smash that like button. Make sure you comment. Make sure you share. Share the motherfucking live. For those that don't know, I am not monetizing on YouTube. Your boy is not monetizing. You know, YouTube want... You know, you can't do this. You can't play music. Fuck all that. You're going to give me a couple of dollars and I got to follow all type of rules. Eat a dick, YouTube. So your boy is not monetizing. So if y'all would like to fucking donate, dollar sign, Charlie Rock LD. You already know. Let's get back to the stories. The homie boy, George. So yeah, George throw the exclusive, exclusive parties. I mean, these niggas was rocking seven, $8,000 suits. George was on some suit shit. All that hoodie and Tim's. No, your boy was on another level. You could tell when the dude is making so much bread that he don't even rock jewels no more. You definitely on another level when you don't rock no jewels. You know what I mean? Niggas see your face. They know who you are. You don't got to impress people with your jewels. So again, that's how you know when somebody's on another level. <clears throat> Who's this right here? The like, smash the like buttons, my people. I see we got mad people on here. Salute to everybody in the chats tuning in. It is what it is. Rock with your boy. We in the yard. Repping the real, the hottest podcast out right now. Repping the real. Yo, have y'all been peeping the interviews I've been doing lately? I did a few interviews with the homie uh, Panda Chop News. I got a few interviews out there. You know what I mean? Peep them. They're going, they're going motherfucking viral. Your boy is in the yard. He's definitely in the yard. Who's this right here? William Cartagena. Cartagena, don't tell me you're related to the Hassa. If you're related to the Hassa, get the fuck off my channel. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> salute, homie, salute. So, yeah, man, it is what it is. The homie boy George, definitely legend status. So let me get back to the story. Again, he threw the party in the super yacht. It wasn't even a yacht. It was a ship. I wasn't there. For some reason, your boy wasn't invited, but it is what it is. So, yeah, the rumor is everybody, the waiters, everybody, the you know, they was the chefs. They were all undercover federal agents. And I believe it was a few months after that that the feds came and snatched George and his whole team. His whole team got snatched up. To my understanding, they gave boy George, I believe it was a triple life bid. How you going to give homie a triple life bid? That's crazy. That means the homie got to die 
come back, die, come back, die, and come back, and then you might see the parole board. Ha! Ain't that crazy? We're going to get to Chicky in a minute. Let me finish with George. So, yeah, George is definitely in the feds. He was never on Rikers Island. He wasn't upstate. So as you guys know, Charlie Rock did his time on Rikers Island and upstate, so we never bumped heads while we was locked up. So in case you don't know, if you're doing Fed time, you know, you'll never see somebody that's doing state time. It's just, you know, yin and yang. You're not going to see them. When you're doing time in the Feds, they could send you all over the country. When you're doing time in the state, they only send you within that state. So it is what it is. So, yeah, a few months after the yacht party, he got locked up. And uh, he's been locked up ever since, man. Your boy George never came home. You know what I mean? I don't know what's up with the appeal. I don't know what it is, what it is. Let me show this nigga here. I hear some love. So, yeah, what the homie said? Uh, S-H-U yard at Downstate when you were still cool with Joe. All right. You already know we was an S-H-U. Solitary confinement. My people, I got the crazy episodes. I want y'all to peep my other episodes. I got the crazy, epic, epic stories. And this podcast ain't like other podcasts. The other dudes be hijacking other dudes' stories and be throwing smoke and all. I ain't with that. Repping the real. The content that I speak about is my content. I don't be snatching whatever's hot at the moment and all that. Your boy don't do that. Repping the real, my nigga. Repping the real. Strictly real stories. So, yeah, I know I could be having more viewers and blow up even quicker if I hijack other niggas' stories or run with whatever's hot for the moment, but your boy don't do that. What the homie right here said? Love the live stream, bro. All right, thank you, bro. You already know. Salute to who? To Michael. It is what it is. Thanks for everybody. Tuning in, we got the crazy people. Everybody tuning in, it is what it is. So, boy George, boy George got the crazy stories, man. Got the crazy stories again. One of the first millionaires to pop off in the Bronx. Uh there was a there was a story that he had a house in Puerto Rico, and in the swimming pool, he had obsession. That was his name, obsession in the bottom of the swimming pool. So, you know, that's one of the stories. Another another story is he had the first James Bond car. He was one of the first guys to put all type of secret compartments in his Benzes and all that. He had a thing where the license plate would flip over. Another one, another stash where oil would come out the back of his car in case somebody was following him. This dude was on another, another level. Your boy George was definitely on another, another level, man. It is what it is. The homie L Boogie. L Boogie down G for real. I'm going to be plugging in L Boogie in a minute. And we're going to go live with the homie L Boogie. OG status. You know what I mean? L, L famous. Boogie down G for real. You already know. I'm going to be plugging them in in a minute, and we're going to do what we do. So, yeah. What else can I tell you about the homie George, man? Let me get comfortable here. Ah. Can y'all see me? Yeah, y'all can rock with me. I'm mad cool right here. All right, I'm trying to get comfortable. Fuck what you heard. So, yeah. um, Hit me with the comments, y'all. My people, subscribe. I want y'all to subscribe. Rock with your boy. I want to thank everybody for making Reppin' the Real banging one of the hottest podcasts out right now where your boy don't blow smoke up your ass. If I don't know, I say I don't know. I don't make shit up. I don't be what you young boys call capping, and it is what it is. So, yeah. Again, there was a lot of people allegedly that boy George, you know what I mean? For whatever reason, got laid out. You know what I mean? I'm not going to get into those type of stories. You know what I mean? It is what it is. 
You know, some shit is not made for, for, for the internet. You know what I mean? Some shit, you got to just take it to the grave. I'm over here looking in the company. Somebody's asking me about, is that Joe Cool? Who the hell is Joe Cool? Mexican rap. I listen to Mexican rap. Salute to my cholos. Salute to my Chicanos. I rock with y'all. My OG Chicanos. My OG cholos. I bang with y'all. Somos Latino. La raza. La raza puñeta. <laughs> que viva la raza. So yeah, my people, it is what it is. Your boy George is still locked up, man. Salute to boy George. I hope someday he'll see the light of day. You know what I mean? It's crazy to spend the rest of your life in prison. You know what I mean? Again, he's been locked up since 88 and we're in 2023 and the homie's still locked up. Hopefully he can get an appeal and one day make it home. Let's show some love to the homie Rich. You already know, 516. Shout where you're from. I want to know where everybody's from. If you're in a different state, hit me up. If you're in a different country, definitely hit me up. The homie right here been repping C-Rock for the longest. Esco, salute. I recognize you've been rocking for the longest, homie. You stay banging. We in the yard. You stay repping. I appreciate that. So, yeah, my people, let's talk about the homie Chicky from the Boulevard, a.k.a. Chickity Boo, a.k.a. Uh, what's his other a.k.a.? Chicky the Emperor. The nigga got mad a.k.a.'s, but Chicky's definitely an OG BX legend. Definitely, definitely. You know what I mean? Chicky was on some other shit. If you from the 80s and you was banging anywhere in New York City, the name Chicky definitely rang bells. Again, I know these dudes. I ran with these dudes. Your boys got receipts. Hold up. Let me show you some shit over here. Where we at? I want to show y'all something. <clears throat> right here, the official old school flick. That's little Paulie, Chicky on the top. Your boy C Rock on the side with the tight black BBD. Rock with your boy. We in the yard. <laughs> oh, shit. This right here, I believe, was in the devil's nest, yo. Your boy got receipts. Yo, I ain't blowing smoke up my ass. You know what I mean? It is what it is. We definitely in the yard. This is definitely a classic throwback flick. This is a personal flick. That's little Paulie. I think we got Chicky all the way on the top. You can barely see him. The homie Kojak, you know what I mean? My cousin Pito, who else did 30 years, you know what I mean? Another OG. I got mad cousins. I come from a long line of murderers. <laughs> it is what it is. Let me hit y'all with another flick. Hold on. I think I got another flick. Oh, this one right here. <clears throat> this is another flick right here. That's Chicky all the way on the left, standing next to my cousin Pito. The dude in the middle, that handsome dude, you already know who he is, the homie C-Rock. We got little Paulie on the right, you know what I mean? We got George on the bottom, you know what I mean? Again, I believe this was the Devil's Nest. The Devil's Nest, what was popping back then, man? The Devil's Nest, that's where the, the G's used to go and spend thousands of dollars on bottles. I believe it was in East Tremont and Webster, something like that. You know what I mean? It was on East Tremont and Webster, some shit like that. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Let me see. What are we saying? What's this right here? Yeah, that was a throwback. That was definitely the throwback flick, my people. Your boy got flakes from back then. It is what it is. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Smash that like button, my people. Smash that like. If you're watching me on YouTube, subscribe. If you're watching me on Facebook or, or Twitter, follow. 
We got the bang with this podcast. This podcast is the real, repping the real. We international. Again, your homie got people from from New Zealand, from Iran, from Japan. You know what I mean? Your boy got people from everybody. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We got the mad people here, yo. We got the mad people tuned in. Little Paulie, my man, also, I did two decades up top with your cousin, Pito. David, salute, David. You said you did a what? Two decades up top with my cousin, Pito. My cousin, Pito, also did 10 years in the box. Let that sink in. My cousin, Pito, Pito Pitola, he did 30 years, man. Out of the 30 years... Allegedly, <laughs> for a body, allegedly, he bodied somebody in the mess hall, him and a couple of dudes, and they gave him 10 joints in solitary confinement. How the homie's going to do 10 years in the hole? Your wallet. Let that sink in, my people. 10 years in solitary confinement. It is what it is. So again, salute to the homie David Soto. Welcome home. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And it is what it is. Again, thanks for everybody in the comment. So let's go in on the homie Chicky. Chicky was definitely that dude. Still is that dude. You know what I mean? He ain't dead, so he's still that dude, man. It is what it is. I met Chicky on Southern Boulevard. And I met him through my cousin Pito, as a matter of fact, in the early 80s. You know, I heard about him. He heard about me. We know we linked up. And, you know, we put in work together sometimes. And, you know, and sometimes we didn't, you know. That's the thing about OGs. You know, you don't always got to rock with each other. You know, you'll get together. You know, you might go on a mission, whatever, whatever. Once the mission is over, you go your way. I go my way. You know, you don't count the next nigga's money. You don't be in the next nigga's pockets. You know what I mean? Y'all come together, join forces, go on a mission, get the bag. After the mission is over, y'all each go your separate ways. That's how it was. You know what I mean? I believe it's still like that. Salute to everybody tuning in. So, yeah, I met Chicky on the boulevard. Uh, Let me tell you a Chicky story. I was with my cousin, Pito. I was still a stick-up kid back then. There was a Kentucky Fried Chicken on the boulevard. Chicky was in the pizza shop. There was a pizza shop on 149th and Southern Boulevard. That used to be like his little headquarters. So at that time, your boy C-Rock was a stick-up kid. So I ran in Kentucky Fried Chicken and hit this dude for uh, his sheepskin and his man for the bomber. Your boy ran up on him, broad daylight, backed out. Told him to run it. I took his sheepskin. I took his boy's bomber. And before I ran out, I snatched his chicken box. Ah, how your boy's going to snatch the chicken box? I was hungry. <laughs> your boy done robbed him for the chicken on top of his clothes and all that. I came out and Chicky just happened to be there. He seen what I did. He was looking at Pito like, yo, your cousin's crazy. You know, so after that, that's where we met, man. Chicky, we used to run with this dude named Eddie Ed, who's another OG. A lot of people don't speak about Eddie Ed, but Eddie Ed put in crazy work. You know what I mean? Eddie Ed definitely put in crazy work. I was with Eddie Ed on the island, putting it in. I was with Eddie Ed up top in, in Auburn, a couple of other spots. Always putting it in. Eddie Ed, salute to Eddie Ed. Stand up dude, man. I hope you guys make it home one day, man. I really do. Freedom is beautiful, man. And it's crazy fucked up to know that you're going to die in a fucking cage, my people. Let that sink in. It's crazy to know that you're going to die in a fucking cage, my man, that you never coming home. It is what it is. Who's this homie right here? Twin Park, rapping the real. Yatu sabe, homie, salute. Thanks for everybody tuning in. 
I enjoy talking to y'all and telling my stories. You know what I mean? We hitting thousands of subscribers on YouTube. Subscribe. My people, subscribe. Tell your homies about the podcast. You know what I mean? Share it. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. Rock with your boy. We in the yard. Uh, little Paulie. Let me tell you. Little Paulie ha- was cool with Chicky. And then they went to war. war. For those that know, it was a crazy war. Chicky and Little Polly were at war for a couple of years. I believe it started because a bag situation. I mean, I really don't know the story why the war started, but it was a serious war. These dudes used to throw grenades at each other. Wherever they see each other, niggas was backing out and letting off. I've heard stories where they was at the light. They seen the other one coming up the one way. They would get out and just start banging in broad daylight. Again, these dudes was throwing grenades at each other. One time I was in a in a club. I forgot what first class or some shit like that by the Brookner. And Chicky was there. And the homie little Paulie pops up. And them niggas bang out in the middle of the dance floor. They just start shooting at each other. <laughs> and the thing is, nobody got involved. There was mad G's that was on Chicky's side. There was mad dudes that was on Paulie's side. So everybody basically played neutral. So whenever these two dudes would see each other, they would just bang out. So, yeah, I heard the story that Chicky invited Paulie to the White Stone. Back then it was the White Stone, for those that know, know. They had a meeting. I don't know what happened in the meeting. But supposedly Eddie Ed was there and he stabbed Paulie in the ass with a 007. <laughs> That was the rumor that Eddie Ed stabbed uh, uh, little Paulie in the ass with a 007. Eddie Ed was lethal, but so was Paulie and so was Chicky. So that's how the war started. <clears throat> and it went on for years, man. Again, everybody mind their business and they both, when they seen each other, they just used to bang out. It is what it is. Uh, let me see. What else can I tell you about Chickity Boo? Again, you can always, they have a lot of stories on Chicky. So you can always go on YouTube and hit Chicky up. They got crazy stories on him. You know what I mean? They talk about whatever bodies he allegedly caught. I'm not going into shit like that. I don't like to talk about niggas laying niggas out. You know what I mean? There's no statute of limitations on shit like that. So, you know, we ain't dry snitching over here. You already know. Who's the homie right here? Eddie Ed was vicious. That's right, homie. Eddie Ed was vicious. I was with Eddie Ed up top, and I seen him even bang niggas out in the yard. Eddie Ed was definitely, you know what I mean, a dangerous dude. You know what I mean? Let me tell you something about prison, my nigga. Your most lethal weapon in prison is not the violence. Your most lethal weapon in prison is reading a nigga's character. Let me say that again. Reading a nigga's character. You got to know when a nigga's real, when a nigga's fake. You got to be able to tell who's dangerous, who's not dangerous, and he's just living off somebody else's fame or really not putting in the work, but he talk a good one. You know, they got a saying in Spanish, el Pedro que ladra no muerde. So again, the most lethal weapon you have in prison is being able to tell how to read a dude. Your boy C-Rock could talk to somebody in five minutes and break you down. By the way you talk, your body language, the language you use, the shit that you saying, I could tell in five minutes if you're official or not. You know what I mean? I could see you coming a mile away. And be careful because there's a lot of dudes that know the talk, they know the walk, they got the swagger because they've been around real dudes, but they're not built like that. You know, so be careful for shit like that. There's a lot of niggas that be fronting. <sighs> Salute to everybody from Aldo's. You already know. T45, the Rat Hunters. I'm going to have an episode where I'm going to be talking about the jail gangs. I'm going to talk about the Rat Hunters, the Cañoneros. Ah, uh, the Kings, the Bloods, we're going to have a segment just on how the gangs was giving it up. You know what I mean? 
Let's get back to the story. You see, I'll be reading the comments and your niggas be fucking me up. Salute to the Butelo. Again, if your guys want to donate, I won't be mad. Dollar sign, Charlie Rock LD. Rock with your boy. Again, Chicky. Let's, let's finish up with Chicky. So, yeah, man. It is what it is, man. The dude Chicky was definitely another official OG legend from the Bronx. I believe he got locked up. I don't remember. Either 87 or 88, but don't quote me on it. You know what I mean? And it is what it is, man. These dudes I'm talking about, again, these are dudes I know personally. These are real stories. These are dudes I ran with, I came up with. These are not dudes that I read about on YouTube or my man told me, no, your boy C-Rock was banging with these niggas. It is what it is. Rock with your boy, we in the yard. Repping the real, homes. Repping the real. <laughs> I like saying that shit. Fuck your niggas. So, yeah, and uh, it is what it is. Yeah, he got, Chicky got locked up back then, and he's still locked up, man. Again, I hope to appeal or somewhere these dudes get to come home. You know, salute to everybody that's locked up. Salute to Chicky, Boy George, my cousin Baby, you know, and it is what it is, man. Again, if you want to know more about these dudes, look them up, Google them. Boy George, Chicky the Emperor. It is what it is. Let's get to baby. Baby Cañonero. My official blood cousin. But those that don't know, I'm going to put you on point with baby. Uh, baby was on America's Most Wanted in the 90s. I believe he got locked up in uh, 1990 Halloween, October 31st. And they caught him on a humble the cops that brought him into the precinct didn't know who the hell he was. The whole precinct was wilding out like, oh, she, you got the infamous baby. And the niggas that arrested him had no idea who they had. They called him on some humble shit. Yeah, man. Baby was working for a dude that was supposed to be that dude, and he was putting in crazy work. Baby, I believe, was uh, charged with like about 15, 16 bodies. 17 years old, 15, 16 bodies. He was known for extorting dudes. I, let me tell you a story before that. I was on the island while baby was putting in all this work. I'm calling my mother on the phone and my mother's telling me, mira Nando, baby is crazy. He's going around killing people and this and that. I'm thinking my mom is well, and I'm thinking my mom's just exaggerating because when I got locked up, he was a youngin. You know what I mean? He was putting all that work while I was locked up. I was on the island. So my mother's telling me on the phone, Papi, baby is losing it. He's bodying mad people. He's doing this. He's doing that. And I'm thinking my mother's just freestyling. I'm on the island and dudes is coming through telling me stories about a so-called baby that's put in the crazy work. He's doing this crazy extracurricular activities. And I'm like, yeah, I, I had no idea that this is my cousin, Johnny Vargas, <laughs> that was putting in all this work. Had no idea. Your boy was in the dark. I'm on the island on some other shit on my other extracurricular activity shit. Again, I left him as a youngin. He started putting in the crazy work. Once I was on Rikers Island. <laughs> Hold up. So, yeah, so baby finally come through and I find out the stories that I'm hearing on the island about the so-called baby is my fucking cousin, Johnny Vargas. It blew my mind. I was hearing the stories. I'm like, my little cuz going out like that? I ain't going front, man. On the low, I was... I was a little proud of him. I mean, I know I shouldn't be saying that, but it is what it is. So I bump heads with baby on the island. We on the island. I was in the three building. He came through to the four building. There was rumor that he bodied a few of the chingalings. That was a gang back then. So um, the chingalings put a hit out on him and they ate his food in the four building. You know what I mean? So I was in the three building. I come through to the four building and I'm going to keep it real. Baby was a little relaxed. 
For some reason, he was catching all these bodies in the street. And when he got locked up in the beginning, the first few months, he was a little relaxed. I don't know what it was. But I used to meet up with him in the law library and I gave him the real. We used to meet up in the law library and I told him, baby, you know, you're my cousin. I love you, my nigga. But you a little too relaxed, nigga. You got to turn it the fuck up. The same way you was turning it up in the streets, you got to turn it up in here, my man. That's right. Your name still got to ring bells. You know what I mean? You allegedly laid a lot of dudes out, so you got a lot of beef. So if niggas even think your gun is going warm, they getting at you. And that's what happens, my people. Whenever people feel that your gun is going warm, they get at you. So I'm on the island. We in the little library in the full building. We in the bathroom and I'm showing baby how to put the razor in his mouth, how to stash the ice pick in between his cheeks. You know what I mean? How to spit out the ox, everything and all that. So what happens? One day we in the law library and the dude that ate his food that cut him walked in and he was, you know, he had a reputation in the poor building and baby told him, cause that's him right there. I'm like, what? Say no more. I'm like, but you're going to have to get him. I'm not going to get him. You're going to put your work in. That's what a real G does. He lets you put your own work in. If I would have put the work in for him, they would have not respect him. And I wanted him, I wanted everybody to respect him as the same G he was on the street, on the island. It is what it is. So I told baby, take this ox. I know I gave him the pick. I gave him the ice pick and I took the ox. I told him, you're going to pass by him, grab the typewriter, act like you're going to type, because that's what they do in the law library. We was in the floor building. And as soon as you pass him, bang him with the typewriter. <laughs> and that's exactly what the whole, my cousin Baby did. He went, he got the typewriter from the law library clerk, and he had walked by this dude a hundred times, so the dude was already lax. He thought Baby was just soft, and he wasn't going to do nothing. Baby passed by, he did me proud. He went right behind him and smashed him with the typewriter. The dude had like a couple of dudes with him, three or four dudes with him. And they jumped up and backed out. Your boy C-Rock, you know I'm holding my cousin down. I spit out the ox and started busting niggas down. You know, and backing him up off Baby. And Baby had this dude on the floor just stabbing him and stabbing him. I'm like, damn, he's going to kill the nigga. You know what I mean? I had to stop Baby from stabbing this dude. <laughs> Because he was going to catch another body. I guess he was letting off all that frustration. You know what I mean? And that's how he got open on the island. But those that know after that, baby was putting it in on the island just like he was putting it in up north. Again, baby went up top. And he's the originator of the cañoneros. For those that know, no. Baby's the official cañonero. I believe he started the cañonero. Hold on. Who's this right here? You know, I like to show love. Salute, David Soto. All right, salute. Baby, baby Cañonero. Baby started the Cañoneros up north. I believe they were um, Cañonero. For those that don't know Spanish, Cañonero means stick-up kid. That's what Cañonero means. The Cañoneros means stick-up kids, and all of them is about it. To be down with the, to be down with the gang, you got to be about it. You know what I mean? You got to have mad time in. You're not going to have a three to five, uh, six to 12 and be down with the Cañoneros. No. The average Cañonero, to my understanding, got 15 years and better. It is what it is. And the Cañoneros is mad known up north. Just like the Rat Hunters, just like the Bloods, just like the Seas, you know, the Cañoneros is mad known. Salute to the Vega family. You already know. Again, smash that like button, my people. I need people to smash that like button. So, yeah, man. Baby Cañonero, my official blood cousin. To be even more official, baby's mother and my mother, may they both rest in peace. They're both buried in the same plot, in the same cemetery, in the same vault. Baby's mother, which is my titi, titi Margarita, is buried with my mother in the same boat. You know, that's my blood cousin, official blood cousin. You already know. It is what it is. So, yeah, man. <clears throat> Baby actually copped out to a 20 to life. 
They didn't give him the triple life, but like Boy George, he had a lot of bodies, but there really wasn't that much evidence. So I really don't know the, the situation of his cases and everything and all that, but he was on America's Most Wanted. You know what I mean? They had a nationwide manhunt on him. He made the newspapers on quite a few occasions. He was known for extorting drug dealers, putting in that work. You know what I mean? Wrapping people up in rugs, scuba diving with no tank, <laughs> cement shoes in the water. You know what I mean? It is what it is. We got the mad people on here, man. I want to thank everybody. Who's this right here? Hold on. I'm Little Mario Machete. Little Mario Machete. Big Mario is my brother. Salute, Little Mario. I heard of your brother. I don't know him, but I heard the name. So salute to you and your brother. Who else we got over here? I think we got Mirror Man, a longtime supporter of Reppin' the Real. Salute, homie. You stay in the yard. We in the yard. Smash that like button, my people. Smash that like button. We got the mad people here, yo. I love the fact that you're feeling C-Rock LD, man. It is what it is. Again, in the last month, I done had the mad interviews. Let me put up a couple of my interviews. Hold on. I got a couple of the interviews. I want y'all to peep them on the homie uh, Panda Chop News. I think I got a couple of them up here. Hold on. I'm looking for them. Who's this right here? That's right. This is where your boy Charlie Rock held down Dipset when they got ran up by BMF. <laughs> y'all got to peep this, this, this interview out, though. I gave the story on how uh, Dipset was in Miami and they got ran up on by the BMF homies and they beat the shit out of them and snatched their jewels and your boy Charlie Rock held them down. If y'all want to know that, y'all got to peep the story. <clears throat> I did another interview right here on um, how the blacks and Puerto Ricans started hip hop together. That's right. For those that don't know, no. First off, this hip-hop rap shit started in the South Bronx, and it was the Blacks and the Puerto Ricans. For some reason, they trying to cut the Puerto Ricans out of the motherfucking history that we didn't help starting hip-hop. You're wildin'. So make sure y'all peep this interview out, you know what I mean? And it is what it is. I've done did the crazy interviews. Who else we got over here? Hold on. This is the tip that uh, I did one on the Hasa. Is it this one? Nah. Hold on. Give me a second. You know your boy's a fucking dinosaur. <clears throat> I wanted to share this right here. Salute to my girl, Remy Ma. I got mad love for Remy. I congratulate you on all your success. And you're coming up and all that. Your baby, your husband, Papoose. That's the official love story, how Papoose, you know, stood down, held Remy all her time. Your boy, if you don't know, C-Rock, I used to road manage Remy Martin. <clears throat> she was always safe on my watch. Nothing never happened to Remy while she was with me. You know what I mean? I always held her down to the fullest. I just want to share some pictures with y'all. Here's your boy C-Rock and the white thing. Ah, repping the real, rock with your boy. For those that don't know, that's me, my cousin Pito. We was on the island together. This flick was on the island. That's mama love, rest in peace. My cousin Pito Pitola, his mother, rest in peace. That's his daughter and his girl at the time, Carmen. Again, the official Rikers Island flick. Rock with your boy. Your boy is official. Your boy is the motherfucking truth. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. Come on, what's this? What's this right here? All right. (laughs) 
Oh, this is what your boy uh, Fat Joe wrote in the book of Jose, how C-Rock was holding him down. He said, me and Tone were running shit in school, robbing classmates and all that, but Charlie was on some next level shit. He said I was on some uh, pulling high shit, sticking up McDonald's and motherfucking Roy Rogers supermarkets and all that. Just a little receipt so y'all can know. Again, this is in the book of Jose with the house I wrote about your boy C-Rock. Here he's talking about how I um stole the, the car from the biggest drug dealer in the Bronx and took him joyriding and didn't tell him about it. <laughs> your boy C, he knows everybody know who the hell C is. This is a story where, again, this is Fat Joe's Book of Jose, where he talks about your boy C-Rock. He calls me C. Everybody know who the hell C is. Here he talks about how he had a hundred niggas in front of his house. He called your boy. I pop up 20 minutes later looking like the fucking Terminator and air shit out. Again, what your young boy's call receipts. Your boy is the motherfucking truth. That homie in the back is Kojak, another OG legend. You know, Kojak was that dude. You know what I mean? He done got murdered a few years ago. You know, and I just wanted to big him up. For those that know Kojak, know who he is. It is what it is. Just wanted to share a few pictures with you. You know what I mean? Let me see what else I got over here. I got Matt Flex. <clears throat> This right here is some original TS members. You know what I mean? We got the original Terror Squad. We got the homie Ken Do, which is actually Kenny Parker on Facebook. Y'all can hit him up on Facebook, Kenny Parker. The other dude is Flex, Full Flex. Not Funk Master Flex, but Flex. Definitely an original. Also RIP. You know what I mean? He passed away a few years ago. He was actually the Hassas Road Manager. You know what I mean? It is what it is. And that handsome dude with the white hat, you already know who he is, that handsome dude. Your boy C-Rock LD. So yeah, my people, I want to salute everybody for joining in. We got the mad people on here. Hit that smash that like button. Smash the like button. It is what it is, man. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Again, Reppin' The Real is the hottest podcast out right now. Make sure you tell a friend and tell a friend. Subscribe, like, rock with your boy. We in the yard. And uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in, man. This is crazy therapy for me. I enjoy doing this. Again, remember, your boy's a life coach. Let's big up. Uh, where is it at? Where is it at? Uh, right here. Again, remember your boy is a life coach for people coming out of prison. I help them, you know, I coach them on changing their jailhouse mentality, man. It's all about giving back to the community. It's all about changing your mindset. You know what I mean? We are what we think. And a lot of us don't realize when you do 10, 15, 20 years, my man, you are institutionalized. And you need some type of therapy, man. You need a coach, somebody to help you switch that mindset. It actually took me a few years to shake that shit off, man. I had to hire a life coach myself. That's where I got the idea to be a life coach. When I came home, I still had that jailhouse mentality. I hired a life coach and he helped me to look at life through different lenses, man. And that's why today I'm a positive pillar in the community. You know, it is what it is. Uh, I don't only coach people coming out of prison. I coach their family. I be coaching mothers, daughters, wives that actually marry with dudes that's locked up and they want to understand why he think like that, why he act like that. I show them why he has the mindset he has, how to deal with it, how to help him change it. You know, there's a lot to go into it. Anybody wanting any of my life coaching services, you can contact me on Charlie Rock LD, Prison Mentality, gmail.com. You already know, rock with your boy. We in the yard. Again, thanks everybody for tuning in. 
It is. We got the mad people. We got over hundreds of people in here. Rock with your boy. Smash that like button, my people. Smash that like button. I think I'm going to do every Saturdays. Every Saturdays, I'm going to be good for one segment. It is what it is. Saturdays is a good day. Remember, never allow nobody to fuck with your peace of mind. Always be in a positive state. You know what I mean? When you do good things, good things happen. You know, these are jewels, my people. See Rock LD, a.k.a. the jeweler. La Bears. La Bears. La Bears. Yeah, La Bears, the jewel company. <laughs> Rock with your boy. We international. Salute to everybody that's been repping Charlie Rock since I, since I popped back on the scene again. It is what it is. Repping the real, the hottest podcast. Tell a friend to tell a friend. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm here for y'all. Your boy C-Rock reps for people that are loyal. Reps for niggas that never ratted. You know what I mean? If you were G, you stood in front of that judge and you never ratted on your homies or nothing, I rep for you. If you were nine to five and you holding down your family, I rep for you. You a gangster. If you a single mother in the projects or in the motherfucking trailer parks and your ass is raising your kids by itself, you a gangster. I salute you. I rep for real OGs, repping the real. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Rock with your boy. It is what it is. I'll catch you on next week. Stay up, my people. One.